Yeah, the biggest trends that we're starting to see is certainly our continued use of advanced high-strength steels, uh, mixed materials, a lot more aluminum, uh, and the introduction of carbon fiber uh, that are coming on the market on today's late model vehicles. Certainly with the uh, introduction of the 2015 Ford F-150, we're going to see a lot more aluminum. Uh, I suspect, obviously, be other vehicles in the future as well. Um, carbon fiber, other com- types of composites. We're starting to see a lot more of those from a material standpoint. Uh, the advanced high-strength steels that are, that are on, employed on today's vehicle are continuing to evolve at a, a significantly uh, rapid pace. Uh, we've recently seen uh, Honda, for example, introduce a 1,500 MPA material from a tensile strength standpoint uh, in their side aperture structure of the vehicle. Uh, these ultra-high-strength steels um, are very heat-sensitive. Uh, they prohibit us from doing a lot of the straightening that we might have uh, done on a vehicle five or ten years ago. Uh, they're, they're very heat sensitive, so we can't apply heat. We have to change our welding methodology. Um, we have to re- change our whole approach to the repair process. Um, when we first walk up to the vehicle, trying to identify what types of materials are we going to be dealing with on this particular model, um, and what are the repair implications of that? Do I have the proper equipment? Do I have the proper training and tooling? And do I have access to the OEM information to uh, perform complete safe and quality repairs? So those are... Uh, all uh, significant factors, and as we start talking about the uh, again the Ford F-150 with the aluminum structure on it and being such a popular vehicle, um, it's going to require new tools and equipment. Uh, we're employing aluminum GMA MIG welders, which uh, may not have been found in collision repair facilities on a broad range uh, just a couple of years ago, and then rivet and rivet bonding technology. Uh, most shops today uh, across the country are not employing rivet and rivet bonding technologies to deal with self-piercing rivets and other types of rivets. So it certainly requires modification to the tooling equipment. And obviously there's a training impact of that as well. And that's one of the things that ITAR does is